Well, hello, and um, welcome to another ma uh, Marriage Matters, where matters of the mar marriage matter because marriage matters. <laughs> I've done that one for a while. <laughs> oh, I had to run off because this, we, <laughs> so we used two tablets and one of them was, was well, it was on 15%, it was fine, we'll get through, and then it went to 2%, <laughs> and then it said about to switch off. <laughs> and we kind of need two tablets. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just won't bore you with them, <laughs> technical stuff. But yes, welcome to Marriage Matters. Uh, my name is Andy B. This is Joe. This is Marriage Matters. Now, when we were married in 96, um, I don't think that we foresaw ever not being married. But in uh, our 25th wedding anniversary, it's 27 years later this year, um, you said, let's start a podcast as a celebration of the fact that God's got us through 25 years. Do you know what? We feel now like we've got the right to speak, like we've got the right to have some authority over marriage because you know what? We've been doing it for a quarter of a century and we felt like we were just starting to have enough experience behind us <laughs> to say, do you know what? We can speak about marriage. Yeah. So I always say this, this is about our experience, husband and wife before God, married 26 years, 27 years this year. What has God taught us? What life lessons have we got? All of that stuff, that's Marriage Matters. But if you want to stay up to date with what we're doing, there's some exciting stuff. So the um, best thing you can do is go to our website, berrybunch.org. Go to the newsletter tab, sign up to the newsletter. It's a free weekly uh, newsletter. It's not just bombarding you with stuff. We don't ask for money for a start. And also it's just designed to encourage, inspire and uplift you before you even get into the newsletter. And then we just let you know what we've been doing, what latest resources we've got for you to use for free. That's the newsletter. The second thing is Marriage Matters now has its own podcast mm. channel, which is very exciting. So Marriage Matters are on Instagram. You can get the link. We'll put it in the notes. And also we're on Instagram. So you can keep up to date with all that we do. Wow, excellent. There's so much going on, isn't there? Yes. Um, so yeah, Marriage Matters is all about uh, marriage. It's about encouraging us to keep going. Um, we've been on this journey for over 25 years, 27 years this year. Um, and so this is episode four, isn't it, of Marriage Matters? Four. Three. Episode four. This is four. Episode four. <laughs> um, and we're always finding things to talk about. And this one, we thought, because we have a theme every time. And this one's about praying together. Now, the interesting thing is there isn't anything in the Bible that tells you to pray with your spouse. There is um, not. And we don't find any couples in there sort of praying. You know, we had the one where Daniel's praying and, and Jesus went to, to, to pray and asked his followers to pray. Um, but we haven't got anything specific around couples. We may be wrong. If you've got one, yeah. let us know. You can let us know by going to barrybunch.org, looking at the contact us, and you can send us a message if you think there is one. We haven't found one. Here's how we look at marriage and prayer. If prayer is critical to marriage and you can't pray, your marriage will fall apart. That doesn't sound like a very good thing. So actually what we're saying is not that it's critical, but a bit like baptism or going to church, these are really good, valuable things which will add to your life. They will add uh, resources, encourage and uplift you in the same way. Prayer, whilst not critical to a marriage, is only going to enhance enhancement that's what i was looking at so these are things that are going to build up like going to church not critical to being a christian but it's kind of an important thing it's a really valuable part not going to church doesn't stop you from being a christian any more than not being baptized will stop you from being a christian or experiencing god's love however it adds and it enhances and it will increase the value of your marriage and your ability to sustain that marriage yeah, I must admit, I, I remember asking your your nan um, when we were, before we got married was what's the top tip for staying married because they were married they celebrated their ruby anniversary ruby so, which is a long time yeah many many years so uh, you know we asked them and they said doing things together that's what really helped them to stay on target to be to stay married for all those years shall I give the advice oh go on then so it's play together yeah uh, eat together yeah live together. It's kind of an obvious one, but hey, uh, um, read together, basically holiday together, anything you do together, the more you do together, the more strength you'll have in your marriage. Yeah, so that, that goes for prayer. Uh, if you're a Christian and you pray regularly, then doing that with your spouse will, like we say, enhance the marriage, will help the marriage. And we can pray together for all kinds of things, for each other, for our family. With Berry Bunch, we actually have family prayer time. And so we encourage prayer in the family. But the other thing is, if you are praying as a couple, then you're encouraging your family, aren't you? You're, 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 you're a witness. You're um, showing them that that's, that's important as well. I love the stories of 
and it's usually this sort of thing, but the, the children come down in the morning and they see their mum, maybe it's a bit older uh, generation, but they come down, see their mum with a Bible on the lap, praying in front of the fire before they get up in the morning, before breakfast happens, before school. I love stories like that because what an example to the children of what is important. I've got one scripture which came to my mind. We didn't have one when we started, actually. This is from Philippians 4. Uh, chapter 4 so Philippians is in the New Testament the last third of the scripture quite near towards the end and it says this don't worry about anything instead pray about everything tell God what you need thank him for all he has done now as we say prayer is not critical to your marriage okay it's really super important it's going to add value but if you don't pray your marriage can still thrive and do well um, but sometimes without prayer, maybe it goes into survival mode too often. So actually prayer is a really good enhancement, but the Bible tells us to pray about everything, whatever it is, take it to the Lord in prayer. Well, if you're married and you're not two people now, you're not two halves, you're one person made up of two parts, not two halves, one person made of two parts, surely you should pray together. Yeah. You know what you're saying there? Prayer isn't critical. You mean... You mean it's not prayer together is critical because yes. I'm thinking prayer is critical. I for may miss that word or two. <laughs> yeah, so praying, you know, we have so many people praying. You know, when you get married, everyone stands up and says, "Yeah, we're going to like support these guys to to stay married and and to support them in in their journey." And so prayer is critical, isn't it? To, to you know individually, but I think what you're saying is not critical that we pray together. That's what I meant. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you're right, but it does absolutely help, you know, um, stay together, don't they? Let me read this next part of Philippians. So we've said don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank you for all he's done. That's verse 6, verse 7 of Philippians chapter 4. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and minds as you live in Jesus Christ. Well, that surely must be a good thing within a marriage context as well so actually the idea of praying is good even if it's not <laughs> critical to pray together <laughs> it is good to pray because you need to have a relationship with god so that means communication prayer is just a way of saying we're talking to god and actually praying together is good praying before the start of the day praying at the end of the day these are good things that are going to enhance your marriage yeah because there will be times i suppose if you if you're married to someone who isn't a christian or maybe I like you say you're away, you know, if you're away for periods of time, it's, but you can do that over the internet, over the, you know, the phone and things. Um, but it also might be that sometimes the other person doesn't want to pray or is not in a good place or, you know, some, there are tough times, aren't there, that can cause us to not be quite so keen to pray. We'll come on to why I generally don't pray if Joe does later. <laughs> <laughs> there is actually a very good reason for that, which actually fits in with marriage and, and getting closer. Uh, but yeah, marriage, this is what we're talking about. This is what we want to look at. Um, if there's topics you want to look at, you can get in touch and let us know. But we talk about marriage because we're passionate about it, because God's excited about it, because a good, strong marriage builds a really great family. We know not everybody has the same experience. We know the single parents and all the rest of it. But we're looking at how do we enhance marriage? What is God's best for a husband and wife in the world today, what is God's plan? And that's what we look at. That's how he says it, because that's who we are. We're a husband and wife. And that's what we look at. We'll be back in a moment. So, endurance. Wait, no, first, I'm Stephen. I'm Nathan. And we're brothers, actually. In case you hadn't noticed. Yeah. I mean, Fact. I know the much more uh, masculine physique on this side may have thrown you off. Yeah, I'm actually older. Yeah. Taller. Longer. Fitter. Maybe. Oh, definitely. <laughs> anyway, that's not the point of endurance. Uh, point no, is spiritual isn't. training, not physical. Yep, yep. Not that we, obviously, we don't compete that much. Nor spiritually. You shouldn't compete spiritually either. No. No. But I'm better than you. <laughs> don't know what to say to that. There is no, no answer. The point of endurance is all about one Taking Timothy. Out each other. All about one Timothy four verse eight, which says, "Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better." And so it was an idea, which I think it was my idea actually, wasn't it? It was a joint effort. There's no I in team. Yeah, so it was definitely my idea. Yeah. And um, the idea being that we have to. Well, I was challenged because basically I enjoy exercise. I was doing lots of weight training, lots of running and I was getting a bit um, you were failing to uh, train spiritually yeah yeah you could say that I was idolizing physical fitness rather so than we created endurance to help him learn better how and to so balance I... spiritual and physical training yeah basically okay 
Because I've already cracked it. No. No. No? Got a long way to go, yeah. So, go check us out. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, you, you're way behind. This is the part of Marriage Matters where we go deeper and look more deeply into the subject of praying together, praying together as a couple. Um, it's a bit like you've gone snorkeling and now we've got the aqua lungs on and we're going deeper. Yes. So we scratched the surface in the introduction where we decided there was. You scratch the surface of water. I suppose if it's ice. <laughs> Yeah. But if it's ice, you're not going to go deep sea diving, are you? No. I'll show we, up. Yeah, we, we looked at the fact that it isn't specifically stated in scripture that couples need to pray. But we found, um, well, you found a good piece of scripture that kind of gets us to pray at all times. Yeah, we, we've said that marriage together isn't, um, you know, isn't something that has to have prayer together. Um, we're going to tease you a little bit, but we'll we'll come back on to why I generally don't pray when Joe does. It's actually a very positive thing. But let me just carry on from Philippians 4, verse 6. Um, I'm using the New Living Translation, which is quite good. If English isn't your first language, NLT is a very, very good uh, version of Scripture. And we've said so far, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Can you imagine having an argument if his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus is kind of happening? <laughs> There's a thought. Now, let me move on to the bit that you're probably most familiar with. And this is one of the things I think sometimes we know a piece of scripture. We kind of miss what comes before and after because we know this one. And you'll probably recognize this when it says this. Philippians 4 verse 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honourable, right and pure, and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Now, if we apply that into marriage, there wouldn't be an argument. <laughs> Ever. The problem is that we kind of put this stuff down, we forget about it, and we get a bit heated, and we forget that, you know, his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus, because we allow the anxieties, we want to win, I'm going to have this argument, I'm right, all that stuff gets away, and we've talked about this in many previous episodes, that that is actually evil, <laughs> there's no gentle way around that one, that comes from a selfish heart, so actually if we are praying together as a couple, all that can do is enhance our relationship, I mean, yes, there's a time to stop praying and to do. Let's pray about what we do next. It's only going to get you so far. But actually, prayer is only going to enhance you because what it does is it puts your collective mind onto Jesus Christ. Yeah, it makes me think about, you know, often people say, why is it that, you know, we can get very excited about a football match or, you know, we're cheering and jumping up and down with excitement, but then perhaps not sh showing the same enthusiasm for God and, and being at church and, and, and loving God. And, and it just make you think, you think, oh, you know, do I get passionate, excited about different things? And and so it come, coming back to prayer, that we should be passionate about talking to God, spending time with God. And and if if you know you want you spend time with your spouse going to a football match or doing different things, then surely you'd want to spend time talking to God together, wouldn't you? It's it's an it's not an activity, but you know it's it's a thing that you do that's important to you. And if prayer is important, then you would want to do that with your spouse. If you invest in something, then you you value that something. And um, there's another scripture that talks about how um, by your fruit will you be known. It's one of the scriptures that really speaks to me in everything because what I do, what my actions are speaks of my heart, my inner thoughts. But what I do, well, that's more evidence of, of what's really going on. And the thing is, we can say good things. We can say sorry and not mean it. We can say we like that person and, and detest them. But our actions are much more than our words because our actions are us actually doing something and living out what we really believe and think in ourselves. If you're investing in, um, I don't know, investing in your house by painting the walls or redoing the wood, then your house is going to increase in value. If you invest in your marriage through prayer, through spending time together, reading God's word, praying and all the rest of it, your marriage is going to increase in value, metaphorically speaking, but actually not just metaphorically, it really will increase. 
Yeah. I mean, we, we, I remember before we got married, we would do Bible studies together and we would pray together. Um, over the times it sort of got up and down, up and down with different prayers. Um, but when we've really been needing to seek God, we've got down on our hands and knees at the, at the bedside, you at the one side and me at the other. I, I know we've done that from time to time. Many times. Uh, yeah. We tend to pray together, through, you know, through all the, all the sort of uh, issues of the day when we've got time in the mornings but our evening prayers are a little bit kind of um lord help us have a good sleep oh man it's a bit <laughs> we could improve we could spend a bit more time on those prayers maybe <laughs> yeah so i've been talking about why it is i don't pray when joe does now this isn't because i'm lazy i used to pray a lot the pair of us would both pray and pray and pray whether that was kneeling by our bedside um whether that was because we got a list and we worked through it whether it's because we're not going to see each other for a few days um prayer in the middle of making love that's a good one um so prayer needs to be in in amongst everything there is, should be no part of your marriage where prayer is excluded at all but the reason why i don't pray much when joe does pray is because over 26 years nearly 30 years of relationship before we got married you know it's what a few years before that so you see, we're coming up to 27 years of marriage we knew each other for a couple of years boyfriend girlfriend we pray we, because we chat so we talk and then joe prays and i just say amen and then i say there's nothing i can add if i if i pray i'm literally going to say things the way you pray them so actually the reason why i don't pray is not because i'm not praying but because we have prayed and i just use joe's lips i just use joe's voice yeah, but we also ask each other to pray. So if we've got an ailment, you know, uh, uh, if you've got a bad back and you'll say, shall I pray? Or I'll say, can I pray for you? And so there are times, specific reasons, or friends will ask us, you know, they're going through a bad time and we'll stop and pray together as well, won't we? Yeah, there's lots of reasons to pray. There's lots of opportunities to pray. Um, touch on the making love thing. It's a good time to pray. If we can't pray then, in our most intimacy most of the moment as a couple, then we're excluding God from that. And actually we want God into every single area of our life, whether it's finances, buying the groceries for the week, getting the car insurance sorted for the car. We want surely God to be in every single part of our life. And the more we normalize that prayer, the easier it becomes. And the less I have to pray because we have a long chat, Joe will pray. And I just say, amen. Well, to be fair, Scripture tells us to pray without ceasing. So yes. coming back, circling back and saying there isn't anything in Scripture, actually, that covers everything, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, we found the Scripture. Pray without pray ceasing. Pray without ceasing. So basically, we, we should be praying together. <laughs> so if you're not praying together, you should be, but it's not critical. This is important. It's good to pray. It's great to pray. It's going to enhance you, but it isn't critical. Unless there's a Scripture I've missed that says, husbands, wise pray. But I haven't seen that one. There's scriptures about all sorts of things to do with husbands and wives, but not that one. Well, we go to church and pray um, as a body. Yes. Um, there'll be certain, we go to prayer meetings and things like that. So it would seem odd not to pray together, wouldn't it? That we'd go and pray in church and we'd go and pray in small groups, but then we wouldn't pray together at home. That doesn't say, seem right, does it? <laughs> seem a little bit weird, wouldn't it? Yeah. So the takeaway is coming up next after this. <laughs> You'll never guess what, Dave the dog has his own show and it's called Dave Unleashed. Are we sure about this? Well, I'm going to be there on hand. I'm going to help him. Mm. <laughs> what, what mayhem are we to expect? <laughs> well, to keep him on track, he's got story time, he's got art time. So, you know, and I'll be there to help him. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> And we are back for the takeaway. I want food now. <laughs> Always. So let me read this. Let me start this segment with a bit of scripture. Philippians 4, chapter, sorry, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 9. And we've been reading this through tonight, uh, through this episode. Go away, silly phone. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds everything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honourable, right and pure and lovely and admirable. 
Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing, and the God of peace will be with you. And if we do that, arguments wouldn't happen. Why do arguments happen? Well, James tells us it's because of selfish ambition and greed. But actually, if we focus on God in that context together as a married couple, we, we couldn't do that. Oh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I was reminded of um, Fight Naked. It's something that um, uh, Fierce Marriage, another blog, um, uh, talks about. And if you fought naked, you wouldn't fight, would you? Because if you stood there, Starkers in your birthday suit, you're not going to argue with each other because it's just not going to happen. And actually, there's an, an element of being naked before God, metaphorically, perhaps physically. There's an, uh, there's an element of that which actually is really valid because what happens is when we're naked before God, vulnerable and vulnerable with each other, actually, we wouldn't want to argue. Because if I see Joe as God's daughter, you wouldn't want to... That's the dad you don't want to upset, in it? <laughs> Let's be honest. Yes. <laughs> so the takeaway is where we just sort of draw the um, uh, episode to a conclusion uh, on based on what we've been talking about and what we would take away. Um, and I'm trying to think about what I would take away. I'm just thinking there isn't anything specifically in Scripture I started off thinking, but actually I'm thinking... Pray without ceasing. I feel like the Bible is telling me to pray with you, with with my husband, with our spouses. I'm glad you remembered of your but husband. You know, no, you know. <laughs> um, I know there's certain things. You know, there aren't spe specific things about not gambling and things like that. You know, there are things that are not specific. But you 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 read the scripture and and you think about the principles, and and you just know. I mean, Abraham and Sarah must have prayed together. You know, they would have been praying to God for a son, weren't they, or a child? You know, you, you just kind of, you don't get any scripture about it, but you think they must have done, mustn't they? Well, well you, you <laughs> kind of assume so. Yeah. Uh, Mary and Joseph, you'd like to think prayed, you know, yeah, with Jesus, together. the son of God and all that. It's, yeah. <laughs> but there's no reference of it. And that's that lack of reference is important, but everything needs to be held in the balance of scripture because actually the Bible talks a lot about how uh, we need to, um, to, to, to focus on Christ, to have a relationship with, to develop that. We talk about the spiritual gifts, how are they? That is a, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on us through our relationship with God. And as we converse with God, as we have a relationship with him, then the Holy Spirit will bless us with spiritual gifts that will increase spontaneously. In the same way, if we pray together as a couple, if we invest into that part of our marriage, and it can be awkward. There are times when I don't want to pray. There are times when I'm tired. But actually, some of the most beneficial parts of our marriage come from you and me, opposite sides of the bed, kneeling before God, kneeling before each other effectively on the bed and praying through a book. We have a, a book of things we pray for. And, you know, when we do that, it, it changes things because that's petitioning, mm. repetition. Yes, it's it's also the power and influence and impact we have in our prayers because we're a team and if you have a family if you have children then you know we want the best for our children and so you think we'd want to be praying for them um and for the best for them i know you go in at, at most nights don't you and pray over the children on on your own but sometimes when we're a bit concerned about them we'll both go in won't we and pray over them yeah if they're feeling a bit ill a bit low a bit tired whatever or they've got a worry they've shared during the day yeah we'll go and pray and pray with them some more so we're praying with our children we should pray with our spouse mm. surely yeah that would make sense <laughs> so what's your takeaway well um i think the bible is telling us to pray um together as a couple because it's saying pray without ceasing but not directly but not yeah so um but it's, then it, yeah it's like the bible doesn't say that gambling is wrong but there's so much in the bible that very clearly quickly shows you gambling is wrong it doesn't yeah. have to say that what's that scripture all things are permissible but yes. not all things are beneficial yes um so i think it's one of those situations where you read deeper into the scripture you'll, you'll realize that actually the idea of praying together is a good thing um and not that i didn't think it was <laughs> okay so i'm trying to think of an awkward question for you we haven't done that for okay. a while what what's the what um what's the hardest time when you've had to pray for me <laughs> well, I, I can't think specifically but probably when, when we're in we've had some sort of argument maybe but how does prayer then change your heart your mood your mode yeah, I suppose I take the issues to God in prayer and and my perspective changes, yeah. And I think that last part, that's that's the key to the prayer. Why do we pray together? Not because it fixes stuff, 
but actually it fixes us. God works through our prayers to him. As we humble our hearts to God, it changes our heart. And if we are humbling our heart together, again, we're not two halves, we're two parts of one person. That's a scriptural basis. When we do it in that context, things happen and it changes our heart. And we pray for some amazing things to happen and they haven't. And we've barely prayed and things have happened. But actually, it's that time together to pray, which has been invaluable because it draws us closer to God together. And that's the key. So let me let me finish with this scripture then, because this seems to be rather relevant today. Again, Philippians. Oh, what's that going on? Philippians 4, 6 to 8. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which try exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, and right and pure, and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. And the God of peace will be with you. And if you want that God of peace to be with you, there's a caveat, there's a condition. It isn't just God's peace happening. It's our efforts in service of God, in worshipping him, in, in obeying him, in trying to be with him in that relationship, in doing all of those things, then that peace of God will come. And in our marriages, it's the same thing. Good stuff. We finished there. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Marriage Matters. We'll be back in two weeks, fortnight. Every other week we come back. And uh, yes, you can check out the podcast because it'll all be on there. I'm, I'm loading the episode slowly. Uh, yeah, but every episode will be on there. So you can follow a specific Marriage Matters podcast and the specific Marriage Matters Instagram channel. Wow. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. <laughs>